Hello everyone, I welcome you all for SVK tutorials. In this video, I will be continuing with the uh, solutions of uh, model question paper 1 for the subject title Mathematical Foundation for Computing, uh, Probability and Statistic, Computer Science and Allied uh, Engineering branches with subject uh, code 21 MAT CS 41. So, in this, I will be solving question number 4A and 4B. Let us see the solution. Consider question number 4A the digraph of a relation R defined on the set A 1, 2, 3, 4 is shown below. This is the digraph. Verify this relation called AR is a poset and construct the corresponding assay diagram. So, for the given digraph, we need to construct a assay diagram and also we need to verify whether it is a poset or not. So, first of all, we should know the what is the definition of poset. The definition of poset is it should be a reflexive, antisymmetric, and transitive. So, first by looking at the digraph, we will construct a relation R. We shall construct a, a relation R by looking at the digraph. So, there is a, a loop for 1. So, therefore, I will take 1, 1, and there is a direction from 1 to 4. I will take 1, 4. Uh, there is a loop for 2. Take uh, 2, 2. Uh, there is a direction from 3 to 2. So, take the value 3, 2. There is a direction from 3 to 1. Directed graph. Therefore, 3, 1. 3, 3, 3. Since it is a loop. 4, 4. Since it is a loop. 3, 4. Since there is a direction. So, this is what uh, the relation we have got. So, using this relation, I need to show that it is a poset. So, as we have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, I can say that it is reflexive. R satisfies reflexive. Since it contains x, comma x belongs to R for all values of x. For all values of x belongs to A. So, similarly, R is anti-symmetric. Since uh, if you consider x, comma y belongs to R, there is no term called y, comma x belongs to R. When I consider 3 comma 2, when I consider 3 comma 2, there is no relation called 2 comma 3. That's why I can say that it is an antisymmetric. Also, it is a transitive. How can we say that it is transitive? Means if you consider one example called 3, 4, 3, 1 and 1, 4, it is 3, 4. 3, 1 and 1, 4 is 1, 4. Sorry, 3, 4. So, 3, 4 we have a relation, therefore it is a transitive. So, therefore it is satisfying when there is an x, y, y, z, x, z belongs to R. Therefore, I can say that it is a poset. So, after proving that it is a poset, let us draw a assay diagram. Since there is a relation between uh, 3, uh, when I consider 3, 1 and 1, 4, so I got a 3, 4. So, no need of uh, Writing a uh, line means that we know we should not connect a connection between 3 and 4 for the assay diagram. So, 3 is there starting from 3. So, starting from 3. So, 3 is connected to 1. 3 is connected to 1. So, 1 is connected to 4. This is what I told you uh, transitive relation that is 3, 1, 1, 4, 3, 4. So, there is a relation. Then 3 to 2. Since there is a loop called 3, 2, 1 and 4. Since there is a loop for 3, 1, 2, 4, you can construct the vertices since it is satisfying reflexive. Then it is a anti-symmetric from 3 to 1. There is a, it is an anti-symmetric from 3 to 1. Draw a line and it is an anti-symmetric from 1 to 4 draw a line and also it is an anti-symmetric from 3 to 2 draw a line. So, uh, it is a transitive from 3, 1, 1, 4, 3, 4. So, this is what an assay diagram. This is the way of constructing an assay diagram. If you have any doubts, you can put a comment. I will clear your doubts. So, moving on to next question. Let A equal to B equal to C equal to an R and F is a mapping from A to B and G is a mapping from B to C be defined by a function F of A equal to 2A plus 1, G of B equal to B by 3, 
for all a belongs to a uh, for all b belongs to b compute gauf and show that gauf is invertible what is gauf inverse we they are asking so let us go for solving the invertible function so consider f is a mapping from a to b and g is a mapping from uh, b to c so uh, for that reason i am considering gauf of a as it is starting from a so gauf of a can be written as what g of f of a what is f of a defined f of a is defined as 2a plus 1 so in place of a f of a write down that as 2a plus 1 what is g of b g of b is defined as b by 3 so you can think that this value is just b this value is just b so in place of b substitute 2a plus 1 so i have substituted 2a plus 1 divided by 3 that becomes gauf of a gauf of a so for my assumption i am going to assume that for uh, uh, assume that gauf equal to h so therefore it becomes h of a equal to 2a plus 1 divided by 3 suppose h of a is equal to some value called c so therefore c will be equal to what now if i define further h of a as what c so h of a becomes c and c will be equal to 2a plus 1 by 3 solve for a so you are going to get so a will be equal to 3 uh, 3c minus 1 by 2 so what is a now a is nothing but h inverse of c a is nothing but h inverse of c but h is what gauf h is what gauf so therefore a is what a is equal to 3c by 3 3c minus 1 divided by 2 since h inverse value is uh, a is nothing but what 3c minus 1 by 2 just have substituted there and h inverse is nothing but what gauf inverse so therefore gauf inverse is nothing but what 3c by 3c sorry 3c minus 1 divided by 2 that is the uh, required solution for invertible function so they have asked to verify that it is invertible definitely it is an invertible function and gauf inverse has been ex existed so therefore uh, gauf inverse of c is equal to 3c minus 1 by 2 so i think you all understood uh, the concept of solving these two problems if you have any doubts you can put a comment i will clear your doubts thank you for watching this uh, channel if you like this video kindly do subscribe to my youtube channel thank you all